Um, Timmy, look, will you and, and Lassie wait out here first, please? Well, just be a minute. Okay, Mom. All right. Well, hello there. Are you getting your shopping done? my baby's life. I, it was my fault. I just wasn't watching. I, I'm sorry. Well, Lassie may be badly hurt. You've got to get her to Doc Weaver right away. Thank heaven he's close by. Well, I, I'll get the car. Don't worry, Lassie. You'll be all right. Taking us. To be x rayed. Excuse me, ma'am. You must be the Martins, the owner of the dog that saved the little girl? Uh, yes, we are. Well, I'm Al Bronson, reporter for the Capital City Spectator. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I brought you something, young fella. This. I got most of the story from Mrs. Bailey. What's your dog's name, son? Lassie. And this is her present. Well, Lassie, that's a good name for a good dog. What does the vet say about her condition? Oh, um, I'm sure she'll be all right. Of course she will. Well, Mrs. Martin, if you don't mind, I think I'll just stick around for a while, huh? Yeah, you go sit down. Say, Timmy. You ever hear a story of a dog named Balto? There's a big statue of him in Central Park in New York City. A statue of a dog? Mm-hmm. You see, he was a dog hero, too. Now, the children in Nome, that's a city in Alaska, were terribly sick. The only medicine was 650 miles away. Well, now, this was snow country. The only way to get that medicine to Nome was by dog sled. So they... Got teams of dogs, and they arranged for relays, and Balto was to carry the next to the last. Then a blinding storm came up, and they never met the team that was to relieve him. But half frozen and weary, Balto carried that precious diphtheria serum to Nome. And he saved all those children's lives. I bet Lassie would have done that, too. I can't tell yet, Timmy. We'll have to wait until the x-rays are developed. As soon as I see the plates, I'll call you. She's moving. You're gonna be all right. Well, now, looks like Lassie's ready to speak for herself. Let me take her home, please. That's where she belongs. You might as well. She'll be a lot happier there. Will you call as soon as you've seen the x-rays? The first thing. I'll wheel her down the hall while you drive the car around, Paul. We enjoyed your story, Mr. Bronson. You must come out to the farm and see us sometime. Thanks, I'll do that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Timmy, you take good care of that dog and remember to read The Spectator. Your name is going to be in it tomorrow. Gosh, and Lassie's too? Mm-hmm. In big headlines, just like Balto. Gee, thanks. And thanks for finding this, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you and Lassie, Timmy. I think she'll be 
get more comfortable if we leave her here in the kitchen. Yeah, that way we can keep an eye on her. The lass will be happy, too, because she'll be close to us all. She's gonna be fine. Mike wasn't gonna give Lassie a present until Christmas, but we thought it might cheer her up. Gosh, she doesn't act so good. Will she be able to go caroling with us tomorrow night? Of course she will. Boy, will we have a time. First, we'll stop at Mrs. Woodruff's. She makes that swell mince pie, remember? I sure do. Then we'll go to Willie Brewster's. They always have hot crawlers. I had two of them last year. Then we'll visit the Simmons and fill up on gingerbread Santa Clauses. I hope Mrs. Brown has those candied apples. Boy, I can hardly wait. We'll be by about sundown. You and Lassie will be ready. We will. Bye. Bye, Boomer. Bye, Mike. Bye, Boomer. Bye, Mrs. Martin. Christmas is the very best part of the whole year. Don't you think so, Mom? Yes, dear. Christmas is a wonderful time of the year. I want Lassie to enjoy it, too. She will, dear. You want to get a nice full tree, we better get started before there's nothing left but stumps. Yeah, and I got a beauty spotted over by the huckleberry patch. What do you say, boy? The fresh air will do you a lot of good. You go ahead, dear. I'll keep an eye on Lassie for you. All right, then I'll go. I'll get my coat. It'll keep his mind off Lassie, at least for a while. Remember? Last year you said I'd be big enough this year to carry the axe. <laughs> we sure did, and you sure can. Bye, Mom. Come on, boy. Bye. Get well, Lassie. Please get well. Timmy needs you. And so do we. to be any change. Huh? Have uh, you seen the x-rays? Brought them with me. What do they show? There's definite pressure there. Yeah. See this light area here? Mm -hmm. It's in a bad spot. Doc Reaver's here. Timmy, maybe you better take the axe in the barn before you come in. Okay. This other one here, same thing, a different angle.
Paul. Uncle P.G.? Doc? What's the word? It's not good. How bad? She's got to have an operation. What does that mean? Well, that means I've got to fix Lassie up. Make her well again. Oh, I got a copy of the Capital City Spectator here, Timmy. Your name is in it. Uncle Petrie, why don't you take Timmy in the other room and read them all about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, I I'd sure like to read that story myself. Timmy, what do you say you and me go in the parlor here and read what it says, huh? Now, uh, here it is. Courageous dog saves child's life. Betty Bailey. There's one thing you should know about this operation. It's almost never performed on dogs. Well, why is that? Yes, Frank, why? Well, because in the cases of brain injuries to animals, 99 times out of 100, it's a lot more merciful if you just, uh, well... That doesn't apply to Lassie. We want everything done for her. Paul, I've never performed an operation like this. As a matter of fact, there's only one man who has, as far as I can find out. Who is he? What's his name? Dr. Watkins. He's a research veterinarian connected with the state college. Well, can't we get him on the phone? That was my first thought, but I couldn't reach him. He's on his way to Lafayette to spend the Christmas holidays with his family. What do we do? Well, we can wait until tomorrow and see if her condition improves. And if it doesn't, you'll have to perform the operation yourself. You both know that I'll do my best. But you should also know that that might not be good enough. Christmassy. Yeah, and we, uh, uh, we ought to be thinking about getting that tree decorated. How about it, boy? You, uh, ready to start on the tree? I would like to wait until Lassie can watch. Well, uh, just as you say, but we gotta have some place to put the presents, you know. Timmy, um, maybe you could give me a hand stringing the popcorn and cranberries. And the string already. Put a piece of white popcorn, and then a red cranberry. <laughs> I used to love doing this when I was a little girl. Say, it's, uh, it's almost time for the weather reports. I'll get the radio and bring it in here. They did. Just about everybody in the whole world. Of course. The radio. What are you doing? Oh, Jenny. Jenny, w could you please get me the radio station in Capital City right away? It's uh, station KFQZ. Timmy. I couldn't sleep. Neither could I. Can't I stay in here just a little while? We'll both stay. 
I'll get a blanket for us. Dear God, would you please get in touch with Santa Claus and tell him the only present I want is for Lassie to get well. Thank you. Amen. Dr. Watkins? No, none. I don't think we dare wait any longer. How can we help, Frank? We'll have to use this as an operating room. The kitchen table will be all right. Well, I'll get some sheets and some towels. Fine. You're going to be all right, Lassie. Because Doc Weaver loves you, and we all love you. And because I said a very special prayer last night. This the Martin place? Yes, sir. Are you Mr. Dr. Watkins? Oh, I sure am. I've driven all night to get here. Mom, Dad, Dr. Watkins is here. He got here, he got here. I'm Dr. Weaver. We're glad you got here in time, Doctor. You heard the broadcast, then? Yes. This is Ruth and Paul Martin. Hello, Doctor. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Doctor, brief me on this, will you? Well, she was hit by a truck. Here are the x-rays. Uh, folks, uh, I'm sure it'll be much easier on your nervous systems if you wait in the other room. Gotta make our Christmas wreaths, you know. You remember this? Yes, and that'd be for Christmas, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. than eagles, his coursers they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now, Dasher, now, Dancer. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose, like a cherry. But I heard him exclaim, Ere he drove out of sight, happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night.
Well, that's all I can do. She's a healthy dog. Maybe that'll carry her through. How do you do? Well, we finished. Can I see her? Sure you can. Will she be all right? She came through the operation all right. Now we'll just have to wait and see. Christmas, Doctor. Thank you. Well, I'm glad Daddy, to see that you well. Here. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You did it, Doctor Watkins. You made a will. That's my best Christmas present. You're a real Santa Claus. I'm glad I could do it, Timmy. And now I've got to go. I have three grandchildren who are expecting Santa Claus, and I want to be there. Oh, Doctor, it was my little girl that Lassie saved, and. I'd like to pay you for this wonderful thing you've done. Well, thank you, but it wasn't entirely my skill. The prayers of these good people, the faith of a little boy, something more. At any rate, I've been paid in something far better than money. Bless you, Doctor. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's going to be a wonderful Christmas after all. Merry Christmas, Paul. Merry Christmas, dear. Merry Christmas, Demi. Merry Christmas, Lassie. And a very Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> That's all right, Timmy. I'll finish the ice cream, and you can put the sign out now, if you like. Okay. Thanks, Lassie. Hi, Mrs. Martin. Oh, hello, Is Boomer. Is Timmy here? He just went upstairs. Company? Mm-hmm.
Timmy. Hi, Boomer. Aren't you going to play ball? You know I can't. Robin's coming. Oh, I forgot. That English kid. What's she doing? Fixing the bed for Robin's dog. What kind of a dog? Dad said they had a whole kennel of Great Danes. Great Danes? They're big. They sure are. Lassie, put it back where it belongs. Please. Think Robin will try out for the team? Dad said English people play cricket instead of baseball. Cricket? What kind of game's that? I don't know. Think they hide in bushes and chirp at each other? That's what crickets do. Dad stayed with his folks when he was stationed in England. So he's coming here for a visit. How would you like to lick the beater? I'll say. OK. <laughs> Here they are. You can finish it, Boomer. Come on. I'll get his other things and take them on up. Come on, Robin. Meet the rest of the family. Oh, hello, Robin. Howdy, Mrs. Martin. Well, we're awfully glad you're going to be with us. That's mighty white of you, Mom. Jimmy, meet Robin. Hi, Robin. What's cooking, old chap? We're going to be the best of pals, and I'm not just whistling Dixie. Um, oh, uh, Boomer, why, why don't you introduce Boomer? Come on. Boomer, I mean Ralph. This is Robin. Hi. Put her there, Boomer. Lassie wants to be friends, too. My word, she's a beauty. Hasn't anyone let that poor dog out of its crate yet? Excuse me, girl. in a minute. Relax, old boy. Relax. Some great day. He's making you welcome. I bet Robin would like to see his room, Timmy. Come on, Robin. Hands across the sea. Wash up to me. Dinner in five minutes. I'll leave the basin nice and clean. Well, not much like London, is it, Robin? It is rather different, sir. I hope you know how very much we want you to have a good time here. Come to think of it, your mother said those very words to me. Really, sir? I mean, no kidding? I was, uh, I was so American and trying to be so British and... They were so British and trying to be so American. It must have been deucedly uncomfortable. It was, until we just got around to being ourselves. Uh, would you mind saying grace tonight, Robin? I think it'd be nice if you did. 
We thank thee, Father, for this day. Help us tomorrow to do thy will. Breathe thy blessings on every heart in this household, and for what we are about to receive, our deepest thanks. Thank you, Robin. I can't make up my mind which is most delicious. Or if it's a combined taste that make dinner so wonderful. Just wait till she whips up her Virginia baked ham with candied yams. Oh, if they're half as good as this. Are you ready for seconds, Uncle Petrie? Ah. Uh. I'm afraid I'll have to leave seconds to the younger generation. <laughs> Would you mind not smoking just yet, Uncle Petrie? This one's for Mrs. Martin. Mom wanted you to have this. Oh, thank you very much. This one's for Mr. Martin. Thank you, Robin. Here's Uncle Petrie's. Well, now, thank you, boy. And Timmy. Thanks. Well, what do you know? Uh, reckon there's nothing to stop me from smoking now. Say, these are just great. Best pipe I ever owned. My goodness, what beautiful embroidery. And I'll bet Granny did them. Indeed she did. Oh, why, it's lovely. We must all write thank you notes right away. Look what I got. I'm looking. Those are my school colors, Timmy. We're very proud of our colors at home. I'm proud of them too, Robin. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. For Timmy? No, nah, he's walking up ahead. Hey, what is that? A girl? Well, not exactly. Come on, let's dive bomb him. Sure. <laughs> it's Boomer. We always go to school together. You and Lassie actually speak to each other, don't you? Which came first, cricket or baseball? Oh, we were playing cricket before America was a colony. Do you think I could learn it? I'd be happy to teach you. your brooders. And Lassie wouldn't permit Basil to frighten them. Oh? I thought you'd be with the other boys, having fun. We're having enough fun alone. Tomorrow I'm going to teach Timmy how to play cricket. Oh, well, would you like some fresh milk and chocolate cookies? I was rather wishing for tea. I'm not old enough for tea. <laughs> Neither am I, but at home this is tea time. Well, here we call it snack time. I like that expression, snack time. <laughs> I like tea time better. It makes me feel grown up. Oh, come on. We'll wash up first, Molly. Well, shall I pour some milk for Boomer? No, I don't think so. What do you call that old thing hanging around your neck? It's a scarf. Like my cap, it's woven in my school colors. Wearing them is evidence of one's loyalty to a school. Yes? I think we ought to have school colors, too. Yeah, black and blue. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please be quiet? Are there any more questions? The chap in the third row. 
Why do you wear those skinny little short pants? <laughs> Perhaps to remind us that we are still children. Perhaps because exposure to the elements hardens one. Or perhaps we respect our fathers, who also wore skinny little short pants. The young lady in the second row. My name is Wilhelmina. Don't forget to give your address. I won't, if you'll come and see me. So there. I wanted to know if you flew to America, or did you sail? I bet you swam. That's more than any of you fellas could do. Before recess starts, I think we ought to thank Robin for his most interesting talk. Thank you, Robin. Ralph, will you and Bud come to the desk? The rest of the class may be excused. Timmy, I'll give you a piece of my candy if you'll introduce me. Liquish? Okay. I don't know what brought on this outburst of rudeness. Has Robin done something I should know about? Well, the three of us will talk it all out after school today. And tomorrow, too, if your manners do not improve immediately. All right. God bless Mom, Dad, and Uncle Petrie. And Lassie, and God bless everybody. Amen. Excuse me for forgetting. And God bless Robin, too. Thank you. Puma and Bud to like him, because Robin's my friend, too. You sleep? No, Dad. How, uh, how'd you get on with Robin today? Well, we get along fine. Man to man, do you think he'd rather go out with Uncle Petrie and me tomorrow or go to school with you? I know I'd like to be with you. And Robin? I'm kind of mixed up. Well, that happens to most of us one time or another. Even grown-ups? Especially grown-ups. Sometimes talking helps. Well, Boomer and Robin are both swell kids. Of course they are. But they're different in a way. They talk different. They dress different. Yes. But does that matter so much? The kids were uh, making fun of Robin today, is that it? You're not mixed up, Timmy. Well, someone is. Once Boomer and the others understand Robin, they'll learn something you found out by yourself. I hope so. What did I find out, Dad? Oh, that it's not... Wrong or bad to be different. If you meet somebody halfway and get to know each other, you can learn a lot from each other. Oh. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. up a little. Push down the pedal and lock it right there. There you are. Bet you'll be running this thing for noon. Oh, that would be smashing. You smash it and I'll tan your hide. He means that would be swell. Oh? Then why didn't he say so? He did, in English. See you after school. Right out. Don't forget the cricket stuff. Hi, Sean. Here, Basil. Like to try it again? Hop up. Release that gear first. Stay after school. It's not my fault. Our Robin's. If you take his side, you're his friend, not mine. Can't a fella have two friends? 
You playing ball this afternoon? Maybe after my cricket lesson. Come on, Lassie. Now you tell me what the bowler does. He tries to knock the sticks off the wicket. And the batsman must protect the wicket by hitting your bowl. If he succeeds, he has to reach the other wicket safely. Just like baseball. Except that I must get there before the fielder can knock the sticks off the wicket. Pretty complicated. No, it isn't. Just have a go at it. You'll see. Well played, old chap. Throw it in, bud. Give me the ball. Try and get it. You're behaving shamefully. Kindly give me that ball. Sure. Ought to put your energies to better use, chum. Don't chum me. Come on, Robin. Let's go back to the house. We came here to play cricket. I won't let these bullies spoil our fun. Oh, you think you can stop us? It's about time somebody tried. Well, go ahead. Try, if you want it that way. Yeah, I want it that way. Hey, that wasn't fair. Jimmy. Petrie? Huh? Would you mind feeding them for me? Sure, Ruth. Now get out of here. Go on back there. Come on. Get. Get. Go on. Basil? Come here, Basil. Come on. There you are now. Come on. You're a fine little doggy. <laughs> Don't you let anybody tell you you're not. What's he good for, anyway? Always getting underfoot and scaring the brooders. Don't pay any attention to Uncle Petrie. His bark is worse than his bite. I know just how you feel. Robin. Wouldn't you like to talk about it? I've made Timmy lose all his friends. Well, now, that's quite a trick. How did you manage it? By being myself, I guess. They don't like me, and they don't like Timmy because he does. Well, never having been a boy, I... I'm afraid this whole thing confuses me a little bit. Even Basil can't get off on the proper foot. We've caused so much trouble. I think we'd do best to fly on to Toronto. Oh, well, now, none of us here would like that at all. I won't get any pleasure out of it either. Well, if you did leave, don't you think that would be a little bit like running away? They know I'm not a coward. Boomer? I think it was Bud. 
Must have been a real Donnybrook. Oh, it was all right. A real Donnybrook. Well, I think you'll feel better after you've had a bath. I don't know. In any case, I think you owe it to Timmy to talk the whole thing out before you do anything drastic. First of all, though, you have a bath and a rest. Your peaches, Mrs. Martin. gone to the airport. Gee, just when the fellas got to like him, they even wanted to learn how to play cricket. And he thought he was being a nuisance. We ought to go after him. Now, come on. Well, if he cut across the fields, he'd pass pretty close to here. Oh, dear, if anything has happened to him. Come on, Timmy. We'll take Lassie and scout around. There's a wagon path further over. Pick us up there. We've got to find Basil, Lassie. He ran away with Robin. Come on, Timmy. of you, Timmy. It was because of what I was doing to you, making you lose all your pals. I've got something to tell you. And I think you'll like it. Come on home, Robin. Well bold, Timmy. You're not just a whistling Dixie chum. Now, why can't they do this between innings and baseball? I don't know, but I sure wish they would. other kids pay a nickel to watch Lassie do some of her tricks. No. Lassie's no show off. I 
about to show off. What you doing now? Lassie. Lassie, what are you doing? It's fleas. Then it's ticks. Mike's full of them this time of year. <laughs> Lassie's never acted like this before. It must be something worse. Let's find out. I'll start up here, and you start down there. And we'll meet in the middle. Not so fast. You'll miss it. something. I knew Lassie wasn't showing off. She was in trouble. It's a ladybug. Ladybugs are lucky bugs. Maybe we're going to be lucky. Ladybug, ladybug, fly away home. The house is on fire and your children are gone. All except one. Can't wish out loud if we want our wish to come true. And we gotta make a wish before it flies away if we want to be lucky. Wonder why it doesn't fly away. Hey, maybe it's dead. No, it's not dead. It's moving. There's a bunch here. I bet Lassie will be glad I'm getting them off. Three, four, five, six. Gee, there's about 12 here. Eight, nine, ten. What are you doing that for? Soon nobody will step on them. We're both wishing the same thing. Well, if you're wishing we're going to be partners, uh-oh. Any help, Ruth? No, thanks. I'll be through in a jiffy. Good. Well, it sure looks like somebody needs some help. I'm all mixed up. I knew the adding ones, but I can't get this takeaway one. Will you help me, Uncle Petrie? Well, now, uh, if you was to ask me how to trap a wild bear, I could tell you, but, uh, Maybe you better ask your ma. She's the one that does the figuring around here. All right. Which is the one that's giving you trouble? Well, now, let me see. I just might learn something myself. <laughs> uh, uh... Say anything in there about how to get rid of those aphid pests on our apple trees? The usual suggestions. John Garrett says we're in for a real siege. Worst this county's seen in 50 years. And what's he doing about it? And he won't say. When it comes to giving out useful information, <laughs> John's close as a clam. Well, I know what I'm going to do to save our apple trees. There now. That wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> I know how to do it now. Gee, you're smart, Mom. <laughs> well, thank you. 
Being a scientific farmer, I reckon you'll hire one of those newfangled crop dusting contraptions, huh? Uh, you reckon wrong. They're too expensive. I'm using ladybugs. Well, I'll be gall darn. You know something? Ladybugs is what I would have used. <laughs> Gee, Dad, how can ladybugs save your apple trees? By eating up the aphids that are eating up the apple trees. Ladybugs live on aphids. They'd rather eat aphids than, uh, than ice cream and cake. They would? Save your crops nature's way. Use ladybug pest control on aphids. Write today for your order, $10 a gallon prepaid Bill Newton, Constant, California. You mean people sell ladybugs? They certainly do. Make a mighty good living at it, too. Ten dollars a gallon for a bunch of little old ladybugs? Hear that, Lassie? Well, considering how many ladybugs there are to a gallon. How many? Let me see. Uh, Seventy-five hundred to a quart. Shouldn't Timmy figure that out, counting it as part of his homework? We haven't come to quarts and gallons yet. Well, uh, since you're the mathematician of the family, Ruth, how many? Well, um, well there are four quarts in a gallon, and uh, four times 7,500 is uh, 30,000. And that should be more than enough to protect our apple orchard. 30,000? How many ladybugs would it take to save one apple tree, Dad? Well, if they're all lady ladybugs, which are larger than gentleman ladybugs, and they all lay eggs, and the eggs all hatch, about a dozen, I'd say. Yes, with all those babies, 12 would do it. Well, don't count your ladybugs before they're hatched. It's Timmy's bedtime. Come on off to bed with you now. Good night. You too, Lassie. Night, Dad. Night, Uncle Petrie. Good night, boy. Good night, dear. Good night, son. Night, everybody. Thirty thousand ladybugs in a gallon. Gee whiz. Mom, Dad, and Uncle Petrie, and Lassie, and all the ladybugs, and keep them safe so they can save Dad's apple trees. Amen. Suppose they'd wake up like all the other animals? What's the matter, Lassie? They can't hurt you as long as they're on the bench. big to me. Can you tell if they're lady, ladybugs? Dad says they're the biggest. Take a look, Lassie. What's she doing up so early? What's he doing up so early? Ooh. 
Ladybugs? Where'd you find them? Well, I didn't exactly. Lassie sort of picked them up. That boomer and I could find more in the woods. And if we found a gallon of them, you could pay us $10 instead of sending it to those folks in California. We want to go into the business. Breakfast is ready, and school won't keep. What's the mysterious confab about? Timmy wants to go into the ladybug business. Oh, well, that's quite an undertaking. You betcha. You gotta know when and where and how. That is, unless you can find them while they're still hibernating. Hiber... What's hibernating? Oh, hibernating means sleeping through the winter. Like bears do. Only difference is ladybugs sleep together. Thousands of them in one spot. That's what these ladybugs are doing. That's why they were so quiet and didn't fly away, isn't it? Oh, I understand it takes several weeks of warm weather to thaw them out and make them active enough to fly again. Isn't that so, Paul? Boomer and I better get started right after school. Well, it wouldn't harm none to let them try, Paul. It's been a cool spring, and there's bound to be thousands of ladybugs still hibernating under rocks and leaves and hollow tree stumps hereabouts. Well, who'll uh, clean them off the leaves? Takes a lot of patience, Timmy. Well, I'm willing to volunteer. Please, please let us, Dad. You never give up, do you? All right, since you're so determined. Good, well, now that's settled. Would you three gentlemen please do me the honor of joining me at breakfast? And even businessmen don't go to school in their bathrobes. I'll get just real fast, Mom. I've got to set a deadline, though. You've got to deliver the goods by Monday, otherwise I've got to send my order to those folks in California. No, you won't, Dad. <laughs> I wish it was afternoon already, so Boomer and I could start our business. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Timmy. Bye, boy. Bye. Well, work to be done. More coffee? Mm -hmm. You don't really expect him to come back with 30,000 ladybugs now, do you? Confidentially, whether they find the ladybugs or not doesn't matter. What's gratifying is Timmy's reason for wanting to do it. Well, that's what puzzles me. Why is he so anxious? Because he's beginning to grow up. He wants to go into business for himself. What do you think of your independent son? Well, I'm very proud of him. <laughs> Ouch! That hurts! Why does it have to be so tight? Well, so they won't tickle you to pieces when you start scooping them into these bags. How will we know when we have a gallon? Oh, no need to worry about that. If you find them, just keep on scooping and your fortune's made. We almost forgot to tie up Lassie. Huh. Dogs don't like to be bound up, do they, Lassie? <laughs> well, there you are. Good luck and good hunting. It's up to you, Lassie, to help us start our business. <laughs> here because Uncle Petrie said they sleep under rocks and stumps and there are no rocks or stumps around here. <coughs> Dad's North Field. We just came from here. 
thought you said Lassie's the best tracking dog in the world. She is. Then why is she tracking in circles? I don't know. Looks like she doesn't want to find the ladybugs for us. Well, if Lassie doesn't want to find those ladybugs, she must have a good reason. But I still think she's the smartest dog in the world. You're right, she is. Lassie went in that direction, didn't she? Well, then, since people should be smarter than dogs, and we're people, why shouldn't we go back where we started? You mean, since Lassie's so smart, she was leading us away from the ladybugs? Sure she was. Come on, Lassie. <laughs> tree stump where they got the ladybugs was on my side of the property line. No, no, no. No sense getting all riled up, Nevy Garrett. They're telling me did the fence zig or did it zag or who should have mended it. Being strictly a backwoodsman, I never did get the straight of thine or mine or who's right away. So I'm just going to keep on cleaning these pretty little bugs for who's ever orchard. So Paul tells me where to put them. I'm telling you. Those bugs belong in my orchard. You thought you could get away with it just because that stump where I put them stands in property that we're disputing. Now, look here, John. What's this all about? Now, let's start from the beginning. Well, whether you did or whether you didn't, it's the same difference. Would I have spent all that money shipping ladybugs from California just so I could start next year's breeding badge for you? No, I don't think you would. You thought you'd get away with it. Just because that stump where I put them stands on property, we're disputing. Gosh, Lassie, I didn't know that was Mr. Garrett's field. I can't let Dad take the blame for something I did, can I? If Dad gives back those ladybugs, Dad's apple trees won't be saved. You really want to help, don't you? Even if I didn't know they belonged to Mr. Garrett, we still have to replace those ladybugs, don't we, Lassie? You're not going to back out on me again, are you? This is your last chance. Are you coming with me, or do I have to go alone? Threatening you like that, going off in a huff. Stubborn, ornery old fool. Yeah, but the joke's on him. John doesn't know that ladybugs like to try out their wings first before settling down to eat. So if 
He'd put them in his apple trees tomorrow, as he said he was going to do. Most of them would have flown away. Maybe to our orchard, maybe elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Timmy did him a favor by bringing the ladybugs over here. Only John didn't give me a chance to tell him. I better check the irrigation. Where's Timmy? I don't know. The lassie came through here a few minutes ago. Uh, probably on some secret service mission Timmy's got cooked up. Everybody's apple trees are saved. And so, when I took all those ladybugs to John Garrett, and he saw he had more than he'd bought in the beginning... <laughs> What'd he say? He said next year he's gonna buy all his ladybugs from Timmy. <laughs> We're not in the ladybug business anymore. <laughs> 